I will deal with the um, osteology of the face, norma frontalis, or the front of the skull, anterior view of the skull. We can see here the frontal bone participates in the formation of the bones of the face. Um, those are the nasal bones, two nasal bones, and this is the maxilla. Um, the uh, maxilla has a process, a frontal process, that articulates with the frontal bone and articulates with the nasal bone as well. Um, the nasal bones and the maxillae, they form a boundary of the anterior nasal aperture. And the other bone here is the mandible. Another bone that participates in the formation of the face is the zygomatic bone. And of course, we can see the two orbits here. Uh, the orbit is the socket for the eyeball and it is called the orbit because the eyeball rotates within an orbit. At this point where the nasal bones articulate with the frontal bone, this is called the nasion and uh, this is a, a grooved area. And if you go a little bit higher above it, uh, about one or two centimeter above it, this flat area in the midline is called the glabella. This point is called the glabella. And on either side of the glabella, we can see in the frontal bone that there are two ridges. These are called the superciliary ridges. And deep to these ridges is located the frontal air sinus. On the face, there are many foramina, but the most important are three foramina here. These foramina, the three foramina, they lie on the same vertical line. The first one here is called the supraorbital foramen, and it is this foramen is sometimes is in the form of a notch, and this notch can be felt in the living. So the supraorbital foramen, which is located above the orbit, and this is the infraorbital foramen in line with the supraorbital foramen. It's a foramen within the maxilla. And the other foramen is the mental foramen. The mental foramen is located, usually it is located level with the second premolar tooth. These three foramina, they lie in the same vertical plane and they transmit nerves and vessels of the same name supraorbital nerve and vessels, infraorbital nerve and vessels, and the mental nerve and vessels. These nerves, each one of them is derived from one of the divisions of the trigeminal nerve. So the supraorbital nerve is derived from the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal, the infraorbital is derived from the maxillary division of the trigeminal, and the mental nerve is derived from the inferior alveolar, which is a branch of the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. Compression of the supraorbital nerve as it emerges from the foramen causes considerable pain, and uh, this is used by anesthetists to determine the depth of anesthesia and by doctors attempting to arouse a dying patient. Regarding the mental foramen, I want you to see the direction of the mental foramen. Usually, the mental foramen is directed upwards and laterally, and this should be kept in mind while attempting to um, produce um, blocking of the mental nerve, local anesthesia, mental nerve block. So this is the anterior nasal aperture. This is what we call the anterior nasal spine. And of course, the skeleton of the nose here is completed by cartilage to that complete the skeleton of the nose as well as the bones. Inside the nose, you can see the nasal septum in the midline. In life, it is usually off the midline. And the nasal septum is produced by two bones. The superior bone here, which you can see, is the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. And the inferior bone here is the vomer. And the vomer is a separate bone by itself. On the lateral wall of the nose, you can see that there are two ridges or two shelves. These are the middle concha and the inferior concha. The inferior concha 
is a separate bone by itself, while the middle concha is part of the ethmoid bone. The superior concha is also located, but it cannot be seen in this view because the superior concha fuses with the middle concha anteriorly, so they cannot be separated from each other anteriorly. The middle concha and superior concha are part of the ethmoid bone. There are several bones forming the walls of the orbit. Of these bones, we can see here the frontal bone. The frontal bone has an orbital plate that forms the roof of the orbit, as well as a piece of the lesser wing of the sphenoid. This piece of the lesser wing of the sphenoid has a foramen, which you can see it here. This is the optic canal. It transmits the optic nerve and the ophthalmic artery. Of course, the optic nerve is covered by its meninges. And the sphenoid bone also participates by um, a plate of bone here, which is the greater wing of the sphenoid. And between the greater wing of the sphenoid and the lesser wing of the sphenoid is a fissure. This fissure is the superior orbital fissure, and the superior orbital fissure communicates between the orbit and middle cranial fossa. Between the greater wing of the sphenoid and the maxilla, here this is the orbital plate of the maxilla, between them is the inferior orbital fissure. The inferior orbital fissure communicates between the orbit and the infratemporal fossa. The medial wall of the orbit is mainly formed by the ethmoid bone. And here the bone is very thin and might break easily in a real skull. It is thin because the ethmoid bone here contains the ethmoid air cells. More anteriorly is the lacrimal bone. It's a small piece of bone here called the lacrimal bone. And here you can see the posterior lacrimal crest and the anterior lacrimal crest. In between the anterior and posterior lacrimal crests is the lacrimal groove. This is the lacrimal groove. The lacrimal groove accommodates the lacrimal sac and not the lacrimal gland because the lacrimal gland is located in a depression located superolaterally. The lacrimal fossa leads downwards into the nasolacrimal canal, which transmits the nasolacrimal duct that communicates with the nose. On the medial side of the orbit, in between the orbital plate of the frontal bone and the ethmoid bone, you might see two small foramina, and these are the anterior and posterior ethmoidal foramina. Now I'm going to show you a colored skull so that you can differentiate between these bones. So you can see here within the orbit, this is the orbital plate of the frontal bone, and here is the, the, yellow, the yellow bone is the sphenoid bone. You can see that the sphenoid bone uh, has a lesser wing. The lesser wing contains the uh, optic canal, and this is the greater wing. Between the lesser wing and the greater wing is the superior orbital fissure. And here is the orbital plate of the maxilla. Between it and the greater wing of the sphenoid is the inferior orbital fissure. Also here, you can see that there is a small piece of bone, the brown one, and this is a contribution of the palatine bone. This is what we call the orbital plate of the palatine bone. Medially is the ethmoid bone, and more anteriorly, you can see the small bone, separate bone, the yellow one. This is the lacrimal bone, which has the lacrimal fossa between the anterior and posterior lacrimal crests. And laterally, this is the zygomatic bone, contributes again to the lateral wall of the uh, orbit. Inferiorly, the floor, you can see the orbital plate of the maxilla. And here, the orbital plate is grooved and then it will be canalized by the infraorbital nerve. So you can see that the infraorbital nerve grooves the floor of the orbit and then canalizes it and arises from the infraorbital foramen.